Hello, this is week number 32, I believe, of um, first grade and kindergarten distance learning. And we are going to learn a fun story today about called Peter and the Wolf. And you have a packet at home that looks just like this. And I think um, they're in, in Mrs. Steeler's packet that she's sending home. There's the second version of this. So Milo can have one packet and Owen can have the other packet. And Peter and the Wolf, I think I mentioned it to you last week, is a story about a little boy in Russia who um, who lived with his grandfather and he, they lived in the woods. So they don't live in a city like we live in. They lived up in the woods. And so there's a lot of hunters and people go hunting a lot. And so they'd have guns with them because they might go hunting for food and things like that. And um, there's a little garden area that Peter and his grandpa have. And, the, and then there's also the woods that live on their, all sides of their house. And grandpa has some rules. And he tells Peter he's only supposed to be staying in the yard because it can be dangerous if you live out in the woods because there are different animals and things like that and you could get lost. And so this is a fun story that tells the story of Peter and the wolf. And there's a bird and a cat and grandfather, grandfather and some hunters. And um, every single character in the story has a different instrument. And there's a, set, a special song that that instrument plays every time we get to that part of the story. And we're going to hear the story today. But I want to show you, I think the first animal that they talk about, the first character, is a bird. And when you see, when you listen to the bird part of the story, I'm going to flip this so it doesn't shine weird. When you listen to the bird part of the story, you're going to hear a flute being played, which is which sense, makes sense to me because a flute is kind of a high um, voice, has a high voice. It's and all birds, I think most birds are kind of high. And um, when you're listening to their their sound and their chirping, it's kind of a high, tiny voice. It's not super super loud. So every time you, they talk about the bird, you will hear a a little song by the flute. The next one is a duck, and a duck again, I guess, is a little bit lower sound than a bird. And so a, the duck is going to be played by an oboe. And an oboe is an instrument. It's a woodwind instrument that sounds kind of, it's kind of nasally. So it kind of like if I plug my nose and I kind of sound like this, it ha, it's, a, an oboe kind of sounds like that a little bit. It has a little bit more of a, um, it kind of sounds like you kind of have a clothespin on your nose and it kind of sounds like that. And when you think of a duck and they say quack, 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 it kind of does sound like an oboe. Instead of saying quack, 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 it's not more like quack, quack, quack. And so this instrument um, is chosen so it can be um, sounding like a duck quacking. So that's the duck and that's an oboe, also a woodwind instrument. There's a cat in the story. A cat, the cat's story, um, a song in the story is done by a clarinet. It almost looks like an oboe, very much alike. When you look at them, they look very similar, except um, they have their mouthpieces are different. If you look at the part where you stick your mouth in, um, they have different reeds. A clarinet, which is this one right here, has one reed, and you can see the picture right here. This tells you this is a clarinet mouthpiece, and this is an oboe mouthpiece. Clarinet has a reed, which is a little tiny piece of cane, kind of like, kind of looks like your palm leaf from Mass on Easter, on Palm Sunday. And um, there's one little piece that's attached to the top of a clarinet. An oboe has a is a double reed, which means there are two tiny little pieces of reed that are um, connected together with string and wrapped in with wire or string. And so that's what makes it sound a little bit different than the oboe. Okay. Then Peter. Every time you hear Peter, they are choosing to use the composer is choosing to use stringed instruments. So you might hear. And he, there's probably several of them. You might hear some high violins or some lower cellos. And these are the instruments that are used when there's a little song about Peter. The next one is Grandpa. And Grandpa is a bassoon, which again has um, is a really tall thing. If you look at this guy, has to sit down in his chair and it's kind of sitting next to him because it's so long. If he stood up, it might be longer, taller than him. But a bassoon right here again has a reed, a double reed, like an oboe. So again, a bassoon is going to kind of sound like this. So every time you hear the song about grandpa, it kind of sounds like somebody is like the instrument is almost like plugging its nose, kind of a nasally sound. 
Now the rifles, when the hunters come, are going to be timpanis, which is this these particular percussion instruments right here. And they look, they, sometimes they call them kettle drums because they look like they're great big pots from a kitchen. Those are the rifles in the story. And there's a happy ending to it. The story's a little bit, you know, it talks about trying to catch a wolf and there's a wolf in the story. I don't think that, I don't remember if the wolf has an instrument. He must have an instrument, but I don't remember what it was. Um, let me look in your little book. Oh, the wolf, oh, the wolf is French horns. Yes, this is your little, this is your little packet that you can fill out once you, um, once you have some time to do it. It talks about each little character and the instrument um, that's that's the song. The care um, the wolf is a brass instrument, and that's a French horn. Oh, and it's right down here. Hang on here. This is the wolf, and it's a brass instrument because it's made out of metal. And you push the buttons up here, to right there. You push these little buttons to make different sounds, and it almost looks like a garden hose that's all rolled up, doesn't it? It's very very long. If you were going to straighten out that whole pipe it would be super super long all the way across the room but when they in when they make it they kind of curl, twirl it around and kind of wrap it up so you can hold it in your hand and a person who's holding it, it that's what it looks like when they're holding it so i'm going to turn on um the story today and you might it's kind of a long story because there's a person telling you the story but then they stop and they have each um, instrument being played at the, at, the, at the time. So remember when you hear these instruments and every character is a different instrument, you might wanna follow along with your, um, with your packet. And maybe, and it's in order, the very first in, um, animal is the, is the bird. And so you might want to go, turn to the bird page while you're listening to it. And um, while you're listening to the song, you can either decorate it and color this packet while you're listening to it, or you can do it later, but this is Peter and the Wolf. A story. This is the story of Peter and the Wolf. It's a musical story where all of the characters are represented by different instruments of the orchestra. For example, the bird is represented by the flute. The duck by the oboe. The cat by the clarinet. The grandfather by the bassoon. The wolf by the horns. And the hero of our story, Peter, is represented by all of the strings. by the woodwinds. And the hunter's 
rifles by the timpani. And now, our story begins. Early one morning, Peter opened the gate and went out on a big green meadow. Thank you. 
busy arguing. I'll just grab her. Stealthily, she crept toward her on her velvet paws. while the duck quacked angrily at the cat. From the middle of the pond, the cat crawled around the tree and thought, is it worth climbing up so high? By the time I get there, the bird will have flown away. Grandpapa came out. He was angry because Peter had gone to the meadow. It is a dangerous place. If a wolf should come out of the forest, then what would you do? Boys like him are not afraid of wolves. No matter 
shook the wolf. He was getting nearer, nearer, catching up with her, and then he... And with one gulp swallowed her. walked around and around the tree, looking at them with greedy eyes. Oh, 
story of Peter and the wolf and the other animals. And it's kind of fun because Earth Day was just a little while ago, a few days ago. And um, it's kind of nice because nature and different animals work together with Peter. And it seemed kind of creepy at the, for a while, like there was going to be a scary story. And the music sounded kind of creepy with the wolf and stuff. But it ended up being happy because the hunters caught the wolf and they took him to a zoo so he would be safe there and so Peter would be safe in the woods also. There's kind of a little moral to the story and a moral is a little lesson to the story. And um, that is the lesson to the story is the grandpa asked and told Peter not to go into the woods and to stay in the yard and to stay in the garden and to not go in the woods because it's kind of dangerous out there. He could get lost or there are animals out there that might surprise him and hurt him. And um, and the moral of the story or the lesson is sometimes your parents or an adult will tell you things to keep you safe. Like just like your mom and dad, if they were, um, if they told you, if you, if, you, if you were playing with a ball in the front yard and a ball went into the street, maybe they told you, well, come and get us and we'll go get the ball for you. Or if you need to cross the street, be sure you look both ways to make sure that there's no vehicles or no cars coming um, or, you're, or, or, or you might get hurt. Or if you're in the kitchen, maybe there's, maybe don't ever touch the stove or don't ever touch the oven because maybe something would be hot. And they're just trying to keep you safe. And so it's not just that adults are trying to be bossy and tell you what to do all the time. Sometimes they're trying to tell you something to teach you something that you didn't know before um, to keep you safe. So there really is a, a moral of the story or a lesson to Peter and the Wolf, but it's also a fun way to get comfortable with all of the instruments that we talk about um, in your packet. And I think I'm going to make this a two-week unit because your lesson was quite long, so maybe um, it takes a while to listen to that. Once, uh, maybe next week, you can um, turn around and 
do this packet and maybe maybe turn on the music while you're, you're following out the packet. Um, all of the instruments that are being used, there are pictures of them on here and you can learn how to spell them. And then each page has a little half page of each animal that is part of the story. And, on, and um, it's just kind of a fun little packet to kind of remind you of what was uh, used during the what instruments were used during the story of Peter and the Wolf. So I'm gonna make this for two weeks because maybe one week you'll be working on the packet, another week you might be um, listening to the story because it's quite long. So um, I have a great week and we will connect with you another day. See you later. And I can't remember how to turn this off.